Cheek piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Is this piercing a good idea or something you should get done? Coming up next in Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 22. <laughs> For those that are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located in lovely and beautiful Des Moines, Iowa. Um, inside skin kitchen tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as an expert, someone who has done this piercing, someone who has helped people heal through the, uh, go through the healing process with this particular piercing. This piercing is one of those ones I generally try to talk people out of. Um, there's a lot of issues with this and I'm gonna go through them first. We're gonna start out, instead of doing it the way we usually do, which is start out with all those advantages, let's start out with the disadvantages this time. Number one, um, swelling can occur. It can be very extensive and it can last in some cases two weeks or longer. You are piercing through kind of muscle tissue or right between two muscles. Um, it can have the same effect as a tongue piercing does. It is going to affect diet and etc. but these tend to swell and stay swelling, swollen for a longer period of time than other oral piercings. Number two, there's an extremely high risk of doing damage to teeth, gums, and the bone, bone structure of your mouth. They need to be positioned perfectly inside, or in that kind of little soft spot between the two muscles, and also they need to be in alignment with the, with the teeth. If they're slightly above, slightly below, or at weird or odd angles, it can cause a lot of damage. Um, one of the reasons why it's very important to go to a very skilled piercer and find the right person that has been doing a lot of these and knows where they're supposed to go. I see massive amounts when I've seen them come in over the years where people have had them done by subpar people that just position them in the wrong spot and had loads of issues. Um, also keep in mind that unlike even a Lebray piercing or um, uh, Monroe or Beauty Mark, this piercing tends to be in contact with teeth for one reason or another a lot more. Um, it doesn't seem to fit into the structure of the mouth as much as per se those other piercings do. Number three, it will leak out. There's always, I guess I should say, there is a risk of this happening, but I think it is kind of up there on the high 80s, 90 percentile that it is going to leak out saliva. It's gonna do it after it heals, it's gonna do it while it's healing, and it will even continue to do it after the piercing has been abandoned. So if you're okay with saliva leaking down the side of your face, or the risk of that, consider this piercing. If you're not, don't get this piercing. Um, and it's uh, basically because you are going, there are all kinds of saliva ducts inside your cheek area, and there is no way of knowing exactly where they are. And usually, chances are, if you get it pierced, you're gonna break one of those, you're gonna puncture it, and it's gonna start leaking out saliva. Drool, basically. So if you like to drool out the side of your mouths, go ahead and get this piercing done. Number four, this piercing can close extremely quickly, um, even more so than a tongue piercing or even Lebray piercings. Uh, one client I had a few a decade ago or so took it out for a couple hours because they had to have an MRI and could not get the jewelry in roughly about 45 minutes to an hour after they removed it. And this was after they'd had the piercing for a couple of years. It's really a piercing that you once you put that jewelry in there, you have to leave it in, only taking out to replace. Uh, number four, this piercing can greatly affect how you come across socially and professionally. Uh, it is not a very common piercing. It's very unusual. It's kind of on that fringe level. It's something that may affect employment. It may affect what kind of service you get, service you get at the restaurant. It might affect um, how people interact with you. If you are okay with that, fine, but you should know that going in. Now you might be saying, Davo, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it after a couple of years. 
as soon as I get through college and I have that diploma and I'm going to get that high-end uh, office job, the scarring with this particular piercing will be very noticeable and doesn't really go away. You pretty much have indentations there for the rest of your life. Since, it's, uh, since this piercing is done at 14 gauge, there's kind of always a mark there. So understand that beforehand. Now that we've told you all the disadvantages, and if you're still watching, let's go into some of the advantages. Number one, um, it can create dimples. Uh, some people have always wanted dimples. Well, this is one way of creating an indentation in your cheek that resembles having dimples. Uh, number two, there's a lot of different types of jewelry ends that are available, for all from just basic balls of various different materials, all the way up to high-end, very expensive uh, gym settings, very elegant stuff. Number three, this is not a common piercing. Regardless of how many times you've seen it on the internet, I have probably done in my 25 years, maybe 25 of them. They're not a very popular piercing and maybe it's because I generally try to talk people out of it, but they're just not a piercing that you're gonna see in the wild on a regular basis. In fact, every time I see one, I go up and generally ask the person, so have you had this issue, have this issue, have you had this issue, have you had that issue? How is it, how did it heal? How was the swelling? Because it is just one of those piercings that a lot of people aren't walking around with. And I'm guessing that is because they have a reputable piercer that tells them all those disadvantages before they get it done. Um, number four. This has a long history, regardless of healing, fairly easy. Um, it does have the side effect of the saliva, regardless of how well it heals, that high risk of it. But for the most part, this piercing usually heals and has been, and people have been getting this piercing. Uh, in many ancient cultures, tribal cultures, and indigenous uh, tribes for quite a few thousand years. Does that mean it's okay? Does that mean that you're not going to have issues with it? I can't tell you that because you're a unique human individual and it may or may not cause problems. Number five, and I've struggled with finding advantages, by the way, to this piercing. Uh, coming up with five was hard, so that'll kind of give you an idea. The fifth one is, if done right, it has limited contact with gums in the bone structure, structure of your mouth. That's kind of a trade-off, though, because it is in constant contact with your teeth. So it's kind of a not advantage, vantage, I don't know. It's right there in the middle. Now that we've gone through the pros and the cons, or the cons and the pros, let's go through what I would generally tell you as far as uh, what I would suggest for aftercare and my consultation. If you came in and said, hey, I want to get some cheek piercings done, we would have already gone through all the disadvantages. I would have warned you about uh, risk to enamel erosion, gum erosion, softening of the bones inside your mouth, also the saliva problem in the long-term swelling, and the fact that this piercing tends to leave a very predominant scar after it's abandoned. Then I would have gone on to what I would suggest as far as the healing time. Uh, for the first two to three weeks, I would suggest rinsing, well, actually up to four weeks, rinsing with the biotin antiseptic mouthwash or an alcohol-free antiseptic mouthwash roughly three to four times a day. Um, also doing warm salt water rinses with warm water and sea salt a couple times a day for roughly two to three minutes. And also for the outside for the full eight to 12 weeks, I would suggest cleaning or uh, doing compresses or soaks, preferably soaks with warm water and sea salt twice daily um, and then rinsing afterwards. I would also suggest cleaning uh, the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap such as satin or proven at least once a day in the shower and twice if you feel like you've contaminated the piercing. The other thing is you want to cut down your intake of tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, hot and spicy foods, vaping, um, or anything that is warm in temperature or very spicy or anything that may agitate your mouth, especially in the roughly first couple of weeks as your body uh, goes through the swelling. All those things will lead to more swelling. You can also cut down the swelling by drinking lots of cold liquids, staying hydrated, um, gently stick in ice chips for the first 24 to 28 hours and staying away from salty foods and drinks such as Gatorade and sports drinks. Food wise, I suggest sports shakes, nutritional shakes, baby food, applesauce, smoothies, um, frozen treats and anything that's cold and easy to eat. 
especially during the swelling period. Uh, this does not affect piercing or affect eating as much as say a tongue piercing, but it is a good idea to kind of stick with simplistic things until you know what you can handle. Because you're rinsing more and because it's great for your GI tract in your health, which the healthier you are, the faster you heal, I would suggest eating two to three cartons of yogurt a day, add a little bit of granola in there just to make things better and a little bit more interesting. Or even fruit or berries, like blueberries and strawberries and raspberries, all kinds of fun berries. One thing um, I often forget to mention is you want to avoid things that are acidic, like orange juice, tomato-based products, etc. Kind of think back to the last time you bit the side of your mouth and what hurt to ingest, and then stay away from it. If you ingest something and it does hurt, don't ingest it anymore. I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, but you can take over-the-counter anti-inflammatories um, just always check the warning label and whenever in doubt, talk to your physician to make sure that it's okay. As far as cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff, wash your hands when you handle it. Um, the only time you need to be having any contact with the piercing is when you're cleaning it. Let rest of the time, leave it alone and isolate the piercing. Keep everybody else's jummy little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So when you touch your face, Wash your hands before you do so. You want to avoid contact with, uh, or also do not move, rotate, or play with the piercing during the healing process. Not only will this uh, increase the likelihood of infection, prolong healing, but it will also increase the amount of swelling you see and prolong the healing, or prolong the swelling and the healing. So it's just bad. Don't do it. No oral contact, deep mouth kissing, or sexual contact for a minimum of eight weeks. You are more acceptable to STDs during oral sex, which means practice safe sex if you switch partners during oral sex, of course. Uh, yeah, oral sex. I don't know what you kids are up to, but yeah. You're putting things in your mouth. Yeah, okay. Enough. Anyway, um, keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Uh, do not uh, avoid contact from pets. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you. Keep the pets away from them. They are a germ magnet. They just draw things into your environment and spread it all over the place, just to let you know. Also, you're not gonna wanna submerge this piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of. And that's pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. So absolutely no swimming during the healing time. Um, you do not wanna submerge it in lakes, rivers, oceans, pools, hot tubs, or pretty much anything else until it is completely healed. Do not share food items or utensils with other people. Make sure that your own utensils are cleaned on a regular basis. It's a good idea to start with a fresh toothbrush after getting the piercing done and not to store it in the bathroom. You know, airborne fecal matter. Mm -hmm. Because of the nature of the piercing and the swelling, you are gonna to wanna to probably downsize a shorter barbell, uh, barbells, or I should say labre studs, anywhere from two to three weeks. Uh, leaving the longer ones in once the swelling is ended, uh, there's kind of a lot of debate over that, but my theory on it is, is it reduces, going to a shorter one is gonna greatly reduce the amount of contact it's gonna have with teeth and gums and eliminate some of the possibilities of other issues with receding gums and chief teeth chipping and et cetera. The other thing is, is that the, it will reduce the amount of limit or the amount of movement that the piercings are getting, which could kind of speed up the healing process. The thing with changing jewelry during, uh, while a piercing is healed, I never, ever, ever suggest doing it yourself. It's always a good idea to go see your piercer and let them do it. If something goes wrong during the process, they have the tools to get it back in, um, and or you're gonna be less likely to lose the piercing or <laughs> introduce some type of foreign pathogen and get an infection. Um, lifestyle changes and et cetera. First off and foremost, you do not want to sleep on the piercings. Make sure that you're sleeping on your side or your back. Uh, you need to pretty much sleep like a mummy or yeah, like a mummy. There's really no way around it. Unless you can figure out a way to elevate the piercings off the bed. We don't really realize how much we move around our sleep and you can do a lot of damage to a fresh or healing piercing by all that movement and abuse. 
Avoid anything that's constrictive, abrasive, or blocks the flow of oxygen to the piercing. If you're involved in any type of activities, for example, where you have to wear a helmet or face guard, you want to make sure you're not doing those activities until after this piercing is healed or wait till that you're done doing those activities and then get the piercing. Uh, the other thing to consider is because the jewelry cannot be removed for long periods of time. If you're involved with any type of sporting activities, competitive activities, drama, what have you, where you're going to be required to actually remove the jewelry for long periods of time, this piercing is not the piercing for you. I, uh, as I said earlier, they close very rapidly. There are retainers, but they are going to be just as equally noticeable as the jewelry itself. So it's really one of those piercings that once they're in there, you want to leave them in there. So if you have job issues or what have you, where they're not going to let you wear this, this is not the piercing for you. Consider something else that's less visible. So I think that pretty much covers a majority of what you would need to know to make an educated decision on whether or not you want cheek or sometimes they're called dimple piercings. If you feel like I've missed something or you feel like you're, you're I've said something that just flat out confuses you or it's different from what your piercer told you, told you or what your experience was like, please leave a comment. I'm especially cons uh, would be interested in talking to anybody that has had these piercings in not had the saliva problem because I pretty much at this point in time would say about 80% to 90% of the people I've talked to over the last 25 years have had the drooling issue. So if you didn't, well, let's hear about it. Also, if there was other things that you could suggest to other people, of course, we're all about sharing information here and anything you can share to the community. Thumbs up. Great. Thank you. Um, if you like this, of course, give me a thumbs up. Always enjoy having a nice little like. Um, if you'd like to see more of them, please subscribe. We post these, uh, the pros and cons. We're going to continue, or I'm going to continue, me, probably for at least another 15 episodes or so. We're going to be moving on to genital piercings next. I know a lot of people have been waiting for that patiently. Um, not sure how I'm going to do the thumbnails for that, but you know, we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, and hit the notification bell so that you get these on a regular basis. Also, we post videos on tattooing too, and my body piercing basics where I kind of just pick a, a topic that most people don't know about and we and talk about it at length, um, especially great for people that are new to piercing. Um, other than that, have a good day. I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.